Hello, good evening. Welcome to Friday Night's Calendar. This is Friday Night's Calendar. Thank you for joining us. Here are tonight's main stories. Drama at Leeds Bradford. Bosses shut down the airport after a passenger plane skids off the runway as it landed in bad weather conditions. Thankfully, nobody was injured, but the plane is still stranded. I'll have the latest in a few minutes' time. Oh, wow, look at it. It's like a river down there. Look at that truck. It's pushing truck. Everything's just slipped truck all the way to the side. Elsewhere, batten down the hatches. Rivers burst their banks. Roads and railways are submerged. There's weather chaos across the region as Storm Babette takes hold. This huge wave's battering the coast at present. Uh, the coast is extremely dangerous due to the rough conditions and we're urging people to stay away. And of course we'll have the all-important forecast to see how long Babette will be with us. Also coming up on the programme tonight. On the road to a proper night's sleep, the Leeds charity tackling bed poverty, which has delivered thousands of them to families in need. Over the summer I had breast cancer and when I was recovering from the operation it was far from ideal actually having Ruby in bed with me from a, from a physical point of view as well. Um, it was really uncomfortable but just from being able to, I don't really know what else I would have done. It is sports day at Safari School. Harvey Hippo has a smile on his face. He'll be playing lots of different games and hopes to win first place. And from Rooks to Rhymes, find out how these Castleford Rugby League players teamed up to write and illustrate their own children's book. It was in gym one day actually, so we was doing squat or whatever we was doing at the time and I just says, um, bro, I've, I've, uh, I've wrote a book mate, <laughs> do, do, you, uh, do you fancy doing some drawings to go along with it? We start with those alarming scenes at Leeds Bradford Airport where a passenger plane skidded off the runway after landing in atrocious weather conditions there. Well, thankfully, nobody was hurt, but it appears the flight may have fallen foul of Storm Babette, which ripped through our region today. Yes, we'll have more on the wider impact shortly, but let's cross live now to Fraser at Leeds Bradford. Um, Fraser, the airport is actually closed now, isn't it? It is. It has been fully closed uh, by the Leeds Bradford Airport management. Uh, they say that they are working hard to, uh, to get the plane removed from the runway after the dramatic events of earlier today. It was around about two o'clock this afternoon when the plane uh, came in to land. It's a TUI flight, a 737-800 aircraft flying in from Corfu. The landing initially did seem to go well, but then the plane skidded off the runway. The way that uh, Leeds Bradford Airport uh, described it earlier was that it has moved off the runway while landing. Now, whether that is a mechanical problem, whether that is purely because of the storm conditions and standing water on the runway here, whether there's pilot error involved will remain to be seen. Uh, an air accident investigation will no doubt uh, ensue and that could take weeks or potentially even months to come to a decision as to exactly what's gone on. Very scary, of course, for the passengers that were on there. One of them on social media tried to make light of the situation, saying, oops, overshot runway at Leeds Bradford, bogged down on the grass, interesting landing greeted by fire engines and airport authorities. The fire service did attend but their command unit has now left. They came and helped get people uh, from the aircraft and one person who actually saw it happen was Fiona Marr. We spoke to her earlier. She captured uh, some dramatic pictures of the, uh, of the aftermath of the scene. She described exactly what happened when the plane came down to land. It came in and it was really wobbly so I was a bit like oh and um, it had a really hard landing um, really bumpy landing. It was almost sideways, skidding sideways, and it got to end and it just ended up on the grass. I was like, whoa, whoa, you know, watching it, I was like, oh, please don't, you know, don't crash, crash. Um, but yeah, it just came to a stop. Um, so I was like, oh, I think it's uh, everything's okay. But straight away, there was this really loud alarm from the airport, and I've never heard that before. And the uh, fire engines came straight away, so I was like, oh gosh. Um, but I couldn't see any smoke or anything like that, so I wasn't too worried. But yeah, it must have been really scary for them. 
It took around two hours to get the passengers off the aircraft. The problem is there because, of course, all the equipment here, the stairs that uh, come up against the side of an aircraft for people to embark and disembark or would not match up with the, the hole on the side of the plane, effectively the doorway on the side of the plane because it is half buried in the mud. It's going to be some job to get it out. Anyone who's uh, got a car stuck in the mud before will know how difficult that can be. Not clear how much damage to the undercarriage has been done, how badly the damage the plane is or how long it's going to take them uh, to get it moved off the runway here. But the latest statement from Leeds Bradford says that the airport is now closed. We're working with the airline, the relevant operations teams and the emergency authorities to resolve the situation and return services safely as quickly as possible. In the meantime, though, the airport remains completely closed and with the rain still coming down, it's unclear how long that permit, that full closure is going to happen for. Fraser, thank you very much for bringing us the latest live from Leeds Bradford Airport and clearly still very wet there. Well, of course, it wasn't just the airport hit by Storm Babette. We've seen major disruption throughout the day as heavy rain and strong winds battered the region. There are more than a dozen flood warnings and many more alerts in place across Yorkshire and Lincolnshire. Roads have been closed and flooded train lines meant that services were cancelled. Astrid Quinn has been following events in Sheffield and she's done this report for us today. Oh, wow, look, at it. it's like a river down there. Early this morning and roads turned to rivers in Sheffield. Right. Oh, my God, that truck's going to go down there. Into the afternoon and things only got worse here in Woodhouse. Throughout the day, South Yorkshire Fire Service rescued a number of stranded drivers and cars across the city. Others left abandoned under bridges. We've been extremely busy with uh, well over our normal number of calls. Unfortunately, some of these incidents are avoidable, so my, my, my big message would be around uh, avoiding any flood waters. At Sheffield Forge Masters, they were taking no chances. Rain set to continue until 9am tomorrow. That lorry's never going down there. Over in Chesterfield, lorry drivers attempting the crossing that cars had failed to make. By late afternoon, the whole town centre closed. For those travelling by rail, things weren't much better. All trains in and out of Doncaster and Rotherham Central stations cancelled. Yeah, I've not been able to go, so I've had someone pick me up from 35, 40 minutes away and I've had to pay them for a lift. It's horrible because uh, actually should be coming with tram, Rotherham Parkgate, but they cancel everything and I need to take and two buses for coming in my town. And in Mythamroyd, they face a nervous wait to see if rising water levels will recreate the scenes from 2015 that caused millions of pounds of damage. On the coast, Scarborough's Marine Drive closed as the seafront took a battering from Babette. This huge wave is present. Uh, the coast is extremely dangerous due to the rough conditions and we're urging people to stay away. It's very, very dangerous. With weather warnings in place until tomorrow, the advice from the experts is to wait until the coast is clear before returning to the roads, rails and beaches in our region. Helen Steele, ITV News. Well, let's go to uh, Astrid Quinn, who's live for us in Sheffield tonight. And Astrid, uh, we have to ask you just what's it like there now? Well, I'm currently stood next to one of the many roads that have been closed here in South Yorkshire due to the flooding, and this definitely isn't the only one. Uh, underneath the bridge behind me, there's about half a metre of water stopping any of the cars coming through. It's already been drained once and has already filled back up again. And this is just a small snippet, as you might have seen there in the package, of what people here have been experiencing. We've had trams, trains, buses all coming to a standstill and even school closures as well. One of the other casualties in this uh, weather catastrophe has been the football. The River Don has actually burst its banks next to the New York Stadium, meaning that the Rotherham v Ipswich game um, that was scheduled for Ace Clock tonight has been postponed. And this area Area of the world is no stranger to flooding um, and all they can do now is just keep their fingers crossed and hope that history doesn't repeat itself. Yes, thanks very much indeed Astrid. Uh, stay dry, get, uh, get into the warmth. Thank you very much indeed for giving us up today, Ben. And of course we'll have the weekend's full weather forecast at the end of this programme. So still to come before then, we catch up with the Castleford Rugby League star who got fed up of reading the same old bedtime stories, so he got his own children's book published instead.
Police are looking for two quad bikers who attacked a house in Rotherham. Footage released by South Yorkshire Police shows the pair pulling up outside the property on Goldsmith Road before using what appears to be a baseball bat and a crowbar to damage the house and a car parked outside. Anyone with information is asked to get in touch. A clinical support worker accused of planning terrorist attacks on St James's Hospital and the RAF Menworth Hill base has today admitted possessing a pressure cooker bomb with intent to endanger life or cause serious injury to property. Mohamed Farouk, who's 28, was arrested in the grounds of St James's Hospital in Leeds last January. He's already pleaded guilty to possessing an explosive substance having an imitation firearm and a series of notes on a mobile phone on how to make poisons, including ricin and sarin. Now, he denies being engaged in preparing a terrorist attack, attack and will face trial at Sheffield Crown Court next week. Next, efforts to tackle a growing problem of so-called bed poverty in our region, with one charity set up by a lead school teacher saying they've now delivered 6,000 beds to children who need them. Zarak, who distributed more than 2,500 in the last year alone, says it wants to work with more local authorities to raise awareness and to reduce stigma. Well, Hannah Norbury went out with the charity on a delivery. OK, let's go. Let's go. Driving a van around Leeds full of bed frames and mattresses is the norm for volunteer Craig. The charity Zarak was set up to provide children with the most basic of needs, a decent night's sleep. It does surprise me that how many people don't have an adequate bed to sleep on every night. And everybody knows that if you don't get good night's sleep, everybody, everybody is affected. So for a child not to have a good night's sleep, how on earth are they going to be able to do well at school? A couple of weeks ago, eight-year-old Ruby was one of those children to get a bed of her own. After a relationship breakdown and a breast cancer diagnosis, her mum, Fran, was placed into a new, unfurnished council house. And unable to afford a bed for her daughter, they were sharing a place to sleep. What did they give you? What did they deliver? So Zarek came with a bed bundle, which included the pillow, full cover, full um, mattress, beautiful mattress, mattress protector, and all the sheets, all the bedding, pyjamas. Over the summer I had breast cancer and when I was recovering from the operation it was far from ideal actually having Ruby in bed with me from a from a physical point of view as well. Um, it was really uncomfortable but just from being able to, I don't really know what else I would have done without Zara being able to do this because um, I wasn't in a position. What did it mean to you to get your own bed? And it meant so much to me. Um, I was so proud when I saw it and yeah. I just loved it when I first saw it and I just went, ah, oh, now I can chill in my own bed and now it's mine. Like Ruby, many children are referred to the charity through their school who are urging parents to speak to them if they need support. We are seeing that the cost of living is having a huge impact um, on our children um, in all ways um, and actually this is one of those situations. We also know that mental health is also having an impact and that can cause problems as well um, because of the family well-being um, and the situations and as you say not being able to afford even a bed. We have a lot of children and families who siblings are sharing and don't get a good night's sleep so yeah I can see it increasing. Every week up to 85 mattresses, bed frames and pyjamas are loaded into the back of a van at this warehouse here in Leeds. Zarek estimate that by 2027 around a thousand beds will be delivered to children in need nationally but they're determined they will end bed poverty. We know that it won't be a bed alone that ends child bed poverty. And that's why we provide some wraparound support for families to try and help them move forward in their life. And we have to make sure that from the experience that we gain, that we raise our voice and we influence and we campaign for policy change, both on our own, but also as members of organisations such as the End Child Poverty Coalition. It's thanks to the volunteers and donations that new doors are opened each day for families across Leeds. And while the need for Zarek continues to increase, they'll keep bringing out beds. But success to them means an end to the charity. Hannah Norbury, ITV News, Leeds.
It's lovely to hear from little Ruby there. Now, in a statement, a government spokesperson told Calendar that we're providing record financial support worth around £3,300 per household. We're supporting families with food, clothing and other essential costs like beds through the Household Support Fund. Well, the ITV Evening News continues at 6.30 with more on the impact of Storm Babette. Let's find out more from Charlene White. Hundreds of homes flooded, families evacuated and nationwide travel disruption as Storm Babette hits the UK. Weather warnings have been extended by the Met Office as some are told they won't be able to return home before Christmas. The UN Secretary General issues a plea for life-saving aid to be allowed across the border into Gaza. And England face a tough test this weekend in the Rugby World Cup semi-finals as they prepare to face reigning champs, South Africa. So join us for those stories and much more at 6.30. Thank you, Charlene, we will. Now, as school budgets tighten, music lessons are at risk of disappearing from timetables. That's according to the Musicians' Union. They say that access to musical education is vital to ensure that the next generation of musicians come from a diverse range of backgrounds. At around £40 an hour for private lessons, there are concerns that learning an instrument could soon become a hobby reserved for the rich. And in many cases, it's being left to charities to pick up the slack, as Rahim Rashid reports. They say practice makes perfect, but at what cost? Lessons like these are vital for children to be taught music, whether that's on the drums, the piano, or by singing. But at Wales High School near Sheffield, teachers say with maths and English being prioritised, music is often overlooked at many schools. At the moment, schools face uh, many challenges, not least um, the problem of instrumental lessons, and it becomes increasingly difficult to fit a creative subject into what is becoming a world that's looking at pure academic achievement sometimes. A recent Ofsted report found instrumental music lessons are being dropped from timetables as schools try to balance their budgets. The Musicians' Union says parents are having to pay around £40 a lesson for their children to go private. We're letting ourselves drift into a place where music is something that you have to be able to be well off to afford. Um, and that's a tragedy because we need to see a diversity of people moving up into the music industry. Um, it can't just be all about people who've been able to pay, people in private education. The reason that the UK's music industry is such a success story for us internationally is because we've got such a broad range of people in it and we really need to invest in that to keep it going. The Department for Education says it's introduced a new national plan asking schools to teach music for at least an hour a week for 5 to 14 year olds, adding it's spending £79 million a year on music hubs and introducing a £10,000 tax-free bursary for trainee music teachers. It's often being left to charities like the Compound Community Hub, which run free evening classes to give the next generation a voice. I've got ASD, which is autism syndrome, and I find it quite difficult to get my music out there and for people to understand me. That's why I wrote a song about autism, for people to also like know that you're not alone. You can come here, be yourself, you know, you don't have to worry about teachers saying, oh, you have like 10 minutes left. But just like in schools, community projects like these also come at a cost. Funding is a massive issue, obviously, to help run the sessions um, up and down the country with the cuts, uh, the cost of living, energy bills, everything like that. Um, people are struggling. So, yeah, it is. A lot of people are marginalised. Um, especially in certain areas, and they don't have access to these kind of provisions. So I think it's key having something for the youth. With charities and schools working together, it's hoped with lessons like these, there'll still be another generation of musical maestros. Raheem Rashid, ITV News. Let's hope so. Now then, time for sport, and our England players are just 80 minutes away from the Rugby World Cup final. Zero Accounting Software. Sponsors ITV Regional Sports Report. 
So luckily for Arif, we've got you in the nice warm studio yes. tonight. <laughs> I got a lucky straw today, didn't I? Yeah, you certainly <laughs> did. And England, of course, they're the underdogs, aren't they, in this, this match with South Africa? They are, but like anyone would be when you're taking on the current world champions. But for England, they've been proving everyone wrong so far in this competition. Not many would have predicted England to get to the semi-finals, but having beaten Fiji in the quarter-finals, there's a real belief building in the camp and Leeds born scrum half Danny Kear says he's relishing the occasion. I'm always quite quite calm. Um, but yeah, this this game this week feels feels different. It's the biggest game I'm ever gonna I'm ever gonna play in. Um, so I'm really excited, can't wait. It's gonna be an incredible experience. Well, as we heard a little earlier from Astrid, Rotherham's game this evening has been postponed, but so far Sheffield United's game tomorrow night is still going ahead as they search for their first league win. Now, the fixtures don't get any easier for the Blades. They welcome Manchester United to Bramall Lane tomorrow night. Paul Heckenbottom's side have been ravaged with injuries this season, but a positive result could kickstart their campaign. We know what we're in for this season and... and... Yeah, we're up for that fight. We're, we're going to be in our own little league, if you like, at the bottom. That's fine, um, unless we can change that around by positive results. But yeah, we'll, we'll be fighting and giving all we can to get those three points and then see what that does. And finally from me, Sheffield Wednesday boss Danny Rule will take charge of his first ever game as a manager this weekend. He'll have the experience of former Huddersfield Town boss Chris Powell to lean on, who joined the club as assistant coach today. But Rule says he's excited to see the players implement his ideas against Watford. I'm looking forward. It's a, it's a big challenge in Watford, but we, we are ready for this and I'm ready for this. And yeah, hopefully we, we can bring and take points there. It's important now in our situation to create self-confidence. And for me, it's, yeah, it's a... I spoke about the dream becomes true. Good luck to him and fingers crossed the weather doesn't impact any other football fixtures. Oh yeah, certainly. Yeah. OK, thank you. Now, I imagine many of you with little ones might be getting them ready for bed now. It's normally by seven o'clock, isn't it? So um, do you read them a bedtime story? Well, if like one Castleford Tigers rugby league player, you get bored of the same old tales, why don't you take a leaf out of his book and write your own? Yes, George Griffin has penned Harvey the Hamster Finds His Talent and it's been published today. Someone who likes a good bedtime story is our Chris Dawkes. How's things going over there? Good. It's good, man. George Griffin and Beretta Farimo played rugby league together here at Castleford until August this year when Beretta left for Pastures New. But now they've teamed up once again for something a little different. It is sports day at Safari School. Harvey Hippo's a smile on his face. He'll be playing lots of different games. He hopes to win first place. Between them, they've produced a children's book. George has done the words, Beretta the pictures. It's published today, but when we filmed, the lads had yet to get their hands on a physical copy, a literary knock-on, if you like. It was in gym one day, actually. So we was doing squat or whatever we was doing at the time. And I just says, um, Beretta, I've, I've, uh, I've wrote a book, mate. <laughs> Do you, uh, do you fancy doing some drawings to go along with it? And he was like, sort of tilts his head. I goes, yeah, yeah, I know, a bit weird, but I'll, I'll send you it if you want. And he goes, yeah, yeah, definitely. I, honestly, I can't give him enough credit for the finished product. I think it, it's outstanding what, what he's come up with. And yeah, it's a proper testament to, to the bloke and what he's capable of. At the start, I was all over the place. Um, my kids helped me along the way. But I have a daughter who draws and she's coming up with different ideas and we try to go as basic as we could something that will, little kids will, will love. The book's called Harvey Hippo Finds His Talent and follows Harvey as he tries to win a medal at the school sports day. George says it was inspired by something drilled into him as a child to never feel that something is unachievable. Wrapping his trunk around the rock, he aims it at the sun. Harvey Hippo tries his best, but it cannot be done. The story itself, without looking at the illustrations, man, that's a, that's a real good story. Um, I try to read it to my kids a few times and choked up quite a bit because um, it's one of those ones where we've sort of been in that situation. Yeah, I, I just fell in love with uh, George's story straight away. Just because you might not be great at one thing don't mean you're, you're not great at another, so just, just keep trying until you find out what you're good at, really. 
So when someone asks you what you do for a living, will you say rugby league player or author? <laughs> I don't know. I'm gonna, I could say rugby league player for at least the next two years anyway. But you know, if we bring out a second book, who knows? I'll probably say author. And I used to play rugby league in a few years. From the pitch to the page, these two former teammates hope that just like the tackles they make, their new collaboration is a big hit. Chris Dawkes, ITV News, Castleford. <laughs> Cute oh, pictures. Lovely, isn't it? Lovely tale. Yeah. Next up is the highest jump against Jenny Kangaroo. She is clearly favourite. It's what she's born to do. Yes. Well, next up actually is Emma Jessen with the weather forecast. I think we need to know what Storm Babette's doing, don't you? Good visibility on the horizon. Tui sponsors ITV Yorkshire weather. Hello there. Hope your day has not been too bad. I hope it's been good in spite of the weather and I hope I bring you optimistic news for the weekend. It's looking a lot better because the storm will be over tonight and the wind and rain ease off tonight. Bright spells are expected on Saturday. Maybe an odd shower but a lot less than we have had and the rain will cut off and so that is good news and the winds ease down through the weekend and it will be drier on Sunday with actually some pretty pleasant sunny spells. Now one or two warnings just tip over into tomorrow. This amber warning for heavy rain still in force until six tomorrow morning and the wind warning for our part of the world in force until midday tomorrow. However, I think you'll notice a big increase and improvement in the weather, but it's all been very slow moving and very unsettled for the last few days because of that high pressure actually over Scandinavia. It's really left a lot of areas of low pressure over the UK with nowhere to go. So once it starts to move away and they move northwards, then pressure starts to build from the south over the weekend. So that's why Sunday looks actually very promising. Rewinding though to the next few hours, continuing wet and fairly breezy for the rest of the evening but the winds start to ease down overnight the rain starts to ease off as well becoming patchier through the early hours some low cloud mist and murk through the early hours of the morning and then as we head into tomorrow again a pretty murky start to the day maybe a little bit damp at times with an odd shower but as you can see by the lighter green colors some bright spells developing through Saturday afternoon and much lighter winds that will certainly be noticeable and a change in wind direction is expected and so actually Sunday is going to be pretty decent some pleasant sunny spells like I say but after a dry start on Monday things start to turn unsettled again for next week bye bye Tui sponsors ITV Yorkshire weather So the good news then, the storm will have gone by tomorrow afternoon. In the meantime, though, do take care and keep warm. Yes, that's right. And make sure you join us every night next week at 6 for Calendar. We look forward to seeing you then. Have a great weekend, won't you? Bye-bye from all good of night. us.